Hi, so I wanted to make a video today. It seems like I've got millions of videos going on right now, but it is what it is. So, um, I got this Caveco Sport uh, from Jet Pens a couple days ago. And then I got a Goulet cleaning and tuning kit yesterday. And I think, I don't know, the pen god smiled on me or something because I definitely needed one if I was going to have the other. So, um, Jen Wyvern commented something, uh, I don't remember exactly what the comment was, but it was about baby's bottom on my pen, or on just broad nibs in general, and this was a double broad nib. And when I first tried it, it was okay, um, and I'm still using the cartridge, but you can see that I've used quite a bit of the cartridge. Um, and I don't know if the ink quality has anything to do with the way it writes. I would assume it does. This is a Claire Fontaine pad of paper. So I tried to do some writing on this pad of paper with this pen and Jen Wyvern also suggested do it on a really smooth paper. I believe that's who suggested it. <laughs> anyway, so um, I tried writing on the paper. The pen wouldn't even write. Nothing. There was nothing on this paper. I could just write on it and nothing. <laughs> and I just bought this pen and granted it's not expensive in, you know, thinking about the whole totality of fountain pen, you know, existence, but it was like 26 bucks and um, that's a lot for a pen for me, especially considering I have other pens that are cheaper that wrote perfectly right out of the, you know, with the first try. So I was a little dismayed by this. Um, but then I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to try some of the things that came in the kit that I ordered. So one of the things that came in the kit was micro mesh, and it only came with one sheet of micro mesh. And after watching some videos online, I know from Anderson pens, you can order like a, a set that has like seven of them. And I might still do that. But it also came with um, a brass sheet. It came with the micro mesh and a loop and so I used these for a really long time last night I've been working on this nib um, for a while I, I bet I worked on this nib last night for I would say psh, half hour to an hour and I've been working on it this morning and I've made some progress I think that if I had that set from Anderson pens that had the seven different grits this would have gone much quicker because I believe this is like the finest grit you can probably buy or it's a really fine grit and so there was a lot of work to be done on this pen and you know I'm not going to pay forty dollars to fix a nib on a twenty six dollar pen that's you know defeating the purpose of things I wanted to try to show you what was going on and I didn't you know I, I wasn't filming this through the process that would have been a long really long boring video um, and you can see other videos online. Oh wow, that works actually pretty well. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you can... So with the nib, basically the, so the baby's bottom. Um, let's see, it's kind of hard to see on this. You can kind of see it. So with the baby's bottom, what it looks like by the way, my husband loved the Jin Hao. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you that happened to, like immediately after I started using these, I went to cap the pen or po post the cap and it scratched up part of my pen. And I don't know if that's something in here. I don't know if it's just mine. Um, I can see the scratches. They're right there. You probably can't, but you know, I can see them. There you can see them right there. Doesn't that pen look pretty under there? So I have scratches on my pen already, brand new, like within 10 minutes of getting it. I wouldn't, I'll never post this cap again. Anyway, um, so with the baby's bottom, I'll, I'll draw it larger. So the nib ends up looking like this. And I guess the top would be kind of like that. And then you have, this is like the, the slit between the tines. Okay, so what happens is when you try to write, this is where the ink comes through and it would lay down on the paper there. But because there's this, you know, this, I don't know what 
that valley in between the two tines, the ink never actually gets to touch the paper and so it can't, the, the ink doesn't get pulled from the pen to the paper. If you have copier paper or some really cheap paper, you know, it's uh, rough and more absorbent and so you probably won't notice that on that kind of paper because this worked really well on like printer paper, just, you know, Staples printer paper. But when I tried to write on the Clairefontaine paper, it, it didn't write anything at all. And so what you're essentially trying to do when you're using the micro mesh is you're trying to, or this is what I was trying to do, trying to shave off this part of the tines so that you really get more of a nib that looks like, well, let's see, that looks, yeah, it's going to look kind of like that, right? That's what you want. You want something flat so that it can actually make contact with the paper. It can draw the ink through. I think you can see my crude drawings here. And I guess with the double broad nib or the broad nib, you know, there's a lot of, I think it's called tipping material. There's a lot of that. It's like a huge ball of it. And I've tried, like I said, I think if I had the, the better set of micro mesh, this would have gone a lot quicker, but I had this one, one piece. So <laughs> I'm not showing you this side or the other side on purpose because I'm going to show you and it might shock you. Some of you might think I'm crazy. Um, so when I was watching this on Goulet Pens, that was one of the videos I watched, she said this would last you forever. And I bet I have to order another one. And like I said, I might just order the one from Anderson Pens. Because this was all light gray. Look at it. <laughs> all the ink that was in that cartridge is what I used on this. This was last night. And this was this morning. Trying to grind that away so that I could get that. And I think... I'm, I'm close to that. I think there's actually maybe a little more work that still needs to be done. I'm going to try to find a good angle so that you can see. Mm. I think autofocus is also kind of messing with this. Yeah, it's the autofocus. But I've also noticed that it's kind of changing the shape, obviously, of the tip of this pen. There you can kind of see it like that. Anyway, um, I just wanted to kind of check in with you and show you what I've been doing. And so I've been doing, I started with figure eights and then I was doing like infinity symbols. Then I was doing like hash marks back and forth and side to side, up and down. Then I was writing, uh, the this morning I started writing letters of the alphabet because I was finding like if I would go to write an S, I would get nothing on the upstroke. And so, um, and I'm, I'm trying to hold the pen the same way every time, but you know, it's hard. Sometimes you, you hold it at a little bit of a different angle. And so essentially how I've been using the micro mesh is just, like I said, I was doing this and you can see that it kind of had a rough start. Let me move this. Maybe this will be, mm, maybe this will be better. Um, it kind of had a rough start, but now it's flowing pretty well. And so you can even see what the S is. It's working. Um, and then what I'm just doing is kind of blotting off that ink with a paper towel. So, let's see how this writes now that I've done some work. Um, oh, and so then the brass sheet. So in working on the micro mesh, and actually, you know, this is interesting. Look at this part of the micro mesh. Can you see that brownish color? It was almost like it was burning through the micro mesh when I was doing it, and I kind of smelled it. It smelled like burnt rubber. It was really wild. So then, um, once I used the micro mesh for a while, like sometimes little fibers from the micro mesh would pull up and I could, I could see them without the loop on the pen. So I would use the brass sheet. And so how you use the brass sheet is you just take like a corner, and I know you can cut this um, if it gets bent out of shape, and you put it where the, the hole is, and then you just kind of push it down, and I'll turn it sideways, maybe that will be easier. Push it down and kind of slide it through. Oops. Push it down in between the tines, slide it through, and I'm trying to do it sort of slow so you can see. And do you see how I'm, I'm able to pull it through the tines and get out some of that junk? Um, so another thought that I have is, after I've worked on this for so long, and I do have a little bit of skipping issues, I also wonder if it's just the ink, because uh, the ink is really, I don't, I don't really think it's that good. 
Um, you can see I've used quite a bit and I'm almost tempted to just stick my syringe in there, pull out all that ink, clean it out, and then fill it with a better ink. But let's see how it writes. <laughs> I, I always write hell instead of hello and somebody said I had a problem connecting my L to my O. I, I don't. I, I do know how to do that. It just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So um, I just wanted to try to write some, some numbers and letters of the alphabet. And you can see immediately it goes. We'll do cursive um, because I think, you know, that requires more of the pen than printing. Oh, see, that's what I was doing. I was doing A's and S's on my paper because that's where I was finding um, the majority of the, the skipping was occurring. So sorry, my brain is still in that, in that land. We'll go with the actual alphabet in its order. Now I have some, there's more feedback obviously because I think it was just polished to super smooth. Um, and I might attempt to use the Mylar sheets to kind of smooth it out. Um, I haven't, I haven't had the, the I, haven't, I haven't done that yet. Because, oh, see that skipping on the K? And I'll report back. Um, I wanted to do the Mylar sheets on all of my pens, so I'll report back on that. No PQ. See that, uh, that, oh, no, you probably can't see it because it's not close enough. There is some skipping in that S, and that's one of the reasons why I was kept doing S's over and over again. Um, and did you see that? I went for the T, nothing. Then I go again, and then it works, so I don't know if I'm just tilting it a little bit, or again, it could be the ink too. The V was giving me a lot of problems. Again, the upstroke was really difficult. And I had quite a bit of feedback when I do that, so I think I might need to work on that V again. See that? It's that upstroke. And it did it there. So now, because I'm kind of obsessed about this, I'm gonna, it was the S, the V, the Y, the Z, any time I was trying to do an upstroke. And did you see that? It didn't make any... Um, the first time I did it, there was nothing on the micro mesh. Very scratchy. And now that I've used it so much, it's hard for you to even see. So, anyway, I just wanted to kind of check in with you. There, nothing. This has been kind of a process. It's been frustrating because I have never experienced this. All of my nibs have been great out of the box, um, or not in the box literally, but all of my nibs have been great, even on cheap pens, the Pilot Petite, the Plumix, the Metropolitan. But again, those are all Pilots, and I don't know if Pilot, they just must make some superior nibs. Um, I had no problems with my Lamy. It's really, and the Jin Hao was fantastic. Um, it's been this pen and so I'm glad I have this set because I can continue to work on it but um, you know I don't know if I would do this yeah I probably would if I had a really expensive pen I'll be honest with myself but um, so that actually works a little bit better and it looks like my my no see I'm still getting that so I'm gonna just keep working on it um, and like I said, I'm sure I'll update you when I update you on my pens soon about how I'm liking it. Um, I really hope that it starts to work better, though, because uh, I was really excited to get this pen. It's beautiful. But I guess I should say it's already working better because it didn't even work before. And at least now I'm, I'm able to put ink down on the paper. Let's give it another go and see what happens. Did you see that? Nothing. Gosh, that's so frustrating. I don't, I think it's when I move it just a little bit. See, now I'm interested. I mean, we might as well go on this journey together. This was going to be a super quick video. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Do 
Do you see that stuff from the micro mesh in there? Hmm. So I've got to clean that off. And then definitely this nib's shape has changed. Look at that. Do you see how it's flat? I know that's the micro mesh, and I don't know if I've destroyed my pen at this point or what, but at least it's writing. And it wasn't even doing that before. Okay, so I got some junk out of there. I think it is actually writing, well, I mean, it's, like I said, it's actually writing that makes a huge difference. You don't want to see my tripod. Dang, did you see that? It just didn't do it. I'm, I'm not getting a consistent um, result, which kind of drives me crazy. And maybe it's because I'm not consistent with my writing. Do you see that? That Q? No consistency. If I go slower, I'm getting a more consistent line. But, I mean, what's the point of that? If you're writing at a certain speed, that's the speed at which you write. And your pen should be able to keep up. See, that, that didn't come up. Again. Oh, Lord. So, I have a feeling I could sit here for another hour trying to work on this nib. And from what I've heard, if you, and read, if you, you know, send it back to the manufacturer, you basically just get a nib with the same problem because they just replace it. They don't, they don't fix the nib you have, they just replace it. So, that doesn't help me. If I write maybe more upright, that seems to be better, but then I lose the broadness. Do you see that of the nib? That I didn't get anything, so frustrating. So anyway, I'm going to keep working on this. I might order that kit from Anderson Pens and um, see how that goes. I feel like I might grind away the whole nib, but at this point it's not very uh, useful anyway, so I don't know. If you have any advice or tips or anything like that let me know I'm always open to that um, that's one of the reasons why I post on YouTube because I like to get feedback and thoughts and suggestions and advice and um, yeah so I hope you're having a really great day and I will talk to you soon bye